this is the second part of the talk uh, that I'm going to explain that equidistribution of uh, intersection points and hyperbolic surfaces and then we will see the proof. Uh, the so the setting is that x is a finite volume hyperbolic surface Intersection points between pairs of say, between uh, pairs of closed geodesics are equidistributed at x. Uh, what, what do I mean? Uh, so it says if we consider so by this equidistribution, I mean if we consider uh, closed geodesics up to length t and uh, we look at all the intersection points between them, these points and put delta measure on the points, uh, this measure, uh, is, so, uh, and, and make it probability measure, uh, then this is, uh, this, converge, uh, this is converging to the uniform measure on x. So these points uh, become uh, uniform and we let t goes to infinity. Uh, so let's try to formulate that more mathematically. So uh, we consider, let's define gamma t is the sum of all closed geodesics up to length t. And uh, so the, the, uh, yeah, the equidistribution says that if we consider the delta measure at the intersection point, uh, which is exactly that I that we define in the first part of the talk. So if we define this uh, delta major, look at this delta major at intersection points and normalize it by the total volume of this major. And the to total volume of this major is just the intersection number of uh, this gamma t with itself. But, but, but the thing is that here we have a probability major on x, uh, so we want to show that it converges to the, just a uniform measure, so the area measure, uh, and we normalize also the area measure. Uh, so this is alpha, this we call that this is area measure on x. Converges to this uniform measure and t goes to infinity. And uh, in the dual of uh, compactly supported functions on x, so, so this, this is what we want to show, and this is what we mean by equidistribution. And uh, so, this uh, it, it's not you can think you can think about it as an exercise to show that these intersection points are dense. So because these are dense, then it's natural to ex uh, expect that they are also, uh, or to ask this question, that are they equidistributed? And in the compact case, this is done by Lally with different approach, but uh, here uh, we, so, so we work with finite volume, so we have cost, and uh, I mentioned in the first part that intersection number, it uh, acts it's not continuous when uh, x has cost and it's, it has different behavior. So uh, part of the proof is that, uh, so the proof has two parts. The first part uh, that is enough to prove the theorem for compact case, it, it, we use the geodesic current. The second part is just, uh, is more a uh, geometric argument to show uh, what, what, what happened when we have cost. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, that's the plan. So let's just start with the first part of the proof. As I say, we use uh, geodesic current. Uh, so so I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm just giving a sketch of the proof and skip some details, but uh, try to give the general I idea of the steps. Um, so we have, let, let's uh, start with the theorem. 
start with this theorem of, uh, so this is a chair, it, it appeared in work, uh, in the work of many people, Rowling, uh, Margulis, some uh, Bubble and uh, some other people. Um, so that said, the uh, closed geodesics are equidistributed on a uh, surface. Uh, in other words, if we consider this gamma t, the closed geodesics up to length t, then um, gamma t, uh, and we normalize that by its length. Uh, as a measure on unit tangent bundle, it converges to just a uniform measure on unit tangent bundle, which is Lx. And t goes to infinity. Uh, in the dual of uh, compactly, uh, continuous compactly supported function on unit tangent bundle. Um, and so one thing here, uh, so this is a convergence of probability measures, but uh, these lengths of this gamma t is just, uh, this, the norm of this uh, measure is just uh, lengths of uh, gamma t. And this one also we know uh, it is uh, from the uh, first part we know it is uh, pi squared 2 d minus 2. Uh, so from this theorem we have uh, this convergence, uh, co convergence of uh, geodesic current. Um, so, so what, what we can do is uh, we consider uh, if you remember, we said that uh, for geodesic current, for get for, for uh, get the intersection number, first we define an intersection measure. So what we do, we look at the intersection measure of. So because we have this convergence of uh, geodesic currents, so we have also the convergence. We obtain the convergence of the corresponding measure. We look at the push forward of the measure, and what we obtain, we obtain a uh, convergence of uh, intersection measures on X. So it converges. And uh, in the first half, we mentioned uh, Leoville has this nice property that the intersection uh, measure of Liouville with itself is a uniform measure on X. So uh, it is uh, pi over 2 alpha over length of Liouville squared. That's again, uh, alpha is the area measure um, and T goes to infinity in the dual of compactly supported functions on X. Uh, so we have this convergence, and uh, but, but the thing is that it's not enough to obtain the theorem because uh, the problem is that, so if, if it was uh, X was compact, so it was enough, but the problem is that because X is not compact, and uh, this measure here is not uh, exactly uh, the, um, the measure we want in the statement, uh, so it, 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 the thing that it, this is what we have here is not probability measure, and this denominator here is different uh, from uh, the norm of this measure. So there might be a escape of mass to the cusp. Uh, so it's not enough to obtain the theorem because uh, yeah, the, these measures. Uh, if I normalize this measure, it, it, not, it, it so this convergence doesn't tell me that. Uh, it converts to this uniform measure. It converts to a multiple of uniform measure and it might be zero. 
So what we need to show to uh, finish the proof is that there is no escape of math uh, to the cusp. So in other words, we want to show that these measures we have here in this uh, convergence, these are types. So we want to show, so this is the second part of the uh, proof that we want to show um, So then I, I pick this small neighborhood, so uh, we want to show that all of these measures, for, for all of these measures, the, the body, the area of this part with respect to the measure is small. And when epsilon gets smaller, this measure also gets smaller. And all of them at the same time, uh, they are small here. Um, So uh, what one thing we know from the work of Margulis that Margulis say that the closure geodesics up to length t there are the num the, the, the number is uh, e to the t over t and from uh, that result we can obtain that this this denominator this uh, length of gamma t squared is about uh, like the constant e to the two t and uh, so what we want to show is that it this measure compared to e to the 2t is small in this part. And I call this, this part, this neighborhood, u of small. Uh, how the proof works, so uh, I define uh, an excursion. So let's define an excursion as follows. So an excursion is, uh, is an arc that uh, start, uh, that the end point on this form cycle, it goes around uh, the cusp n times. I call that uh, an excursion. And uh, we need two lemmas about this an excursion. Uh, the first lemma is that the intersection number between uh, one and excursion and one, if you have one n excursion and one m excursion, uh, then the intersection number is at most, uh, is less than uh, minimum of n and m. And uh, the second lemma is uh, then, so, so consider all the closed geodesics up to length t. So consider gamma that uh, is length less than t. And so among these uh, closed geodesics, we consider all the uh, n excursions. And uh, so it, I mean, just uh, these are just the parts that go around the cusp n times. So what one single closed geodesic itself, it may have uh, many n excursion. So we, among these called geodesic, the number of, the total number of uh, So the lemma says the total number of uh, an excursion uh, is less than e to the t over n squared, a constant times e to the t over n squared. Uh, So, so you can think about these lemmas as, uh, as an exercise. And 
now let's see what is the total measure of uh, the me uh, u epsilon. So what is So uh, we say that this uh, I measure for uh, multi curves is just delta measure at intersection point. So measure of this small neighborhood is just the number of intersection points here. Uh, so this is number of intersection points in Jerusalem, uh, which is the sum of, we look at the pairs of uh, n excursions and m excursions, the number of n excursions uh, times the number of n excursions, uh, so times the intersection of n excursion and one n excursion and one n excursion. We want to see. We want to just consider the intersection point in U epsilon. Uh, so uh, we should assume uh, m and n are uh, larger than a, uh, a large number because uh, to get so that for one n excursion get uh, into this part n should be large. So uh, this is a number that when epsilon gets smaller, this n, n epsilon gets larger. Uh, and so the rest is just some calculation. We just uh, plug the information from lemma one, this upper bound from lemma one and uh, lemma two here, and we see this is less than uh, sigma. is minimum of n and m, we can factor this here and we get at the end uh, what we get is that the constant e to the 2t uh, sum of uh, m bigger than n epsilon um, log, log m over m squared. And because this summation is, uh, so sum of the, these uh, ratios is converging, so when we restrict that to m bigger than n epsilon, so we can see this is goes to zero. Uh, so this intersection number is uh, small compared to uh, e to the t. Okay, thank you for watching the uh, videos. Um, if you have questions, uh, then uh, I'll see you in the office hours.